Now, a limited amount of fans will be allowed back into seven English football league grounds today after being shut out of stadiums for the first time in history. But uh, for teams used to welcoming thousands of loyal followers every week, like the scenes here at, at Sunderland, the game still won't feel the same. So I've been to meet photographer Stuart Roy Clark, who's been capturing uh, nostalgic images of the football community now for decades. Ever since football began, the fans have been its beating hearts, coming together from all walks of life to share a common goal. Until this year, when grounds fell silent, their absence brought into sharp focus by the images taken by football photographer Stuart Roy Clark. All these pictures show people hugging each other, siding up to people who they never normally hang out with and getting emotional with. Now, beginning to look like is it an era that's passed? Will we ever be within two metres again? Stuart manages to spot things that most of us walk past and take for granted, and he's been travelling the country for 30 years now, getting these snapshots of what football means to fans young and old, from the coliseums that hold 60, 70,000 fans to those places where you've got the fences and railings propping up a few hundred. You know, I think you saw me photographing a ladder over there by the yeah. goal. A ladder speaks of going somewhere, so it's not too arty, it's just a very simple idea. The thing I do is the homes of football, it's very much about bits of old stands, seats, you know, the people who frequent the ground, placing it in a kind of setting or community. Could you ever imagine football without crowds? Ah, don't be ridiculous. It doesn't happen. Even during the war, there was friendlies and there were still crowds. This is the first time we've had no crowds. Cohn FC, who play in the Northern Premier League, are now allowed to have up to 400 fans back in for their home games, with lots of social distancing measures in place. But that's what they normally expect to get anyway. The emptiness is being felt far more acutely at the larger grounds. Ewood Park, home of the Premier League champions from 1995, Blackburn Rovers, it can rock to the noise of 31,000 fans. And even though a selection of hand-picked EFL clubs are being allowed to let in a 1,000 supporters uh, from this weekend, it's a drop in the ocean at places like this. And we just do not know when the masses will finally return to replace their cardboard equivalents here. It's such a unique time though, you know, you've got to photograph things like this if you're a photographer like me trying to cover the whole of football history. When have we ever had this happen before? There's even a cat in the ground over there. Match day at Burnley, but not like this how it used to be. Today it's just lifelong fan Jim and Dotty the dog wandering by outside, remembering the good times. I don't know, it's just part of your life, isn't it? You fetched up. We don't have much as working lot, we just... Go, go to work, go on football matches and that's it. Not to do, you see, when the match is on, you can't go on, so you're, you're lost, there's not a lot to do. Nobody realised what it was going to be like, it's been awful, hasn't it? You know, this, this should now, this road should be blocked off and there should be about 10,000 people walking up and down here buying scarves and hats. The key to it was everybody's equal. When you go to a football game, there's no rich or poor and the thing that makes you equal is you've got that claret and blue top on. We're all Burnley fans. We're somewhere between factory and church. You had the football club, something to believe in, something to worship, something to kind of take you away from who you were and where you were, but actually you were still very much in that place. The fans who have never felt such distance must hope the pictures being taken now will be unique. When they are eventually allowed back en masse, they'll never take for granted again that feeling of, ah, oh, there's no place like home. Well, there's certainly a ground with a view, but uh, a ground that fans can only look at from afar at the moment. More wonderful images are in Stuart Roy Clark's uh, latest book, The Game. I suppose one positive uh, is that Dottie, the dog's getting a lot more walks around the ground. Jim yeah. goes there every home game for Burnley, just thinking he tries to peer in through the windows, he says, but of course oh. he's not allowed in for good reason as well, for safety she's, reasons. She's lovely. She, is she Dottie, isn't she? Yes, and she gets fed more as well, apparently, because he's at home or not, <laughs> yeah, well, not she's watching so the cute. games. She's so but cute. The, the, these images, really, I could study them for ages because they're that real snapshot of time uh, in what we're missing now, the, the masses, the congregation in football grounds. This, in case you haven't worked it out, well, why would you? <laughs> it's the Dell. Southampton, 1992, and you can see how football really is, the heart of the community there.
with the streets, people leaving the You can the game. see the cars parked all yeah. up, up in the street. And I could have been there because I was working in Southampton, the BBC there in 1992, maybe at that game, I don't know which game it was. But... Is that instead of Where's Wally, you play Where's Mike in the photo? Yeah, yeah well, Where's Wally would be quite apt, wouldn't it? Really? <laughs> no! no. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. But yeah, maybe scenes that we, we now, for a time, took for granted, not anymore, though. Yeah. No, well, one day. Mm. We'll, get, we'll get there. Mm. Mike, thanks very much.